Hey everybody, this is John and welcome to the free video. And today what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a look at IWM and just kind of show the anatomy of a topping, flopping process. And so here we go where we had a squeeze that fired off we're up at 144, I think this was on, yeah, July 25th, so a couple weeks ago. As we go along, we come back down, you know, it's like a normal test of the 8 EMA. But then there's a big down day, and of course there's a lot of, you know, oil companies and things like that on Russell and smaller financial firms, and so they're impacted by that. And so right here, you know, it's like, wow, we tested the 21, but we closed above it, okay? And that's very, that's very positive. So, you know, this is, you know, it's very volatile, but that's normal. Okay, it's normal price fluctuation. We're back up above the 21. Great, it's okay to buy the dip. Okay, it's okay to buy the dip in that type of a scenario. And now it's like, whoa, well, okay, now this is a little hairier, but again, it closes up above the 21. So it's still okay to buy the dip. Boom. Next day we actually, uh, it's on low volume. Okay, it's on low volume, but you close below the 21. And so one rule of thumb I like to have is that if you close below the 21, I will no longer buy the dip, okay? Because in, in trading, you're essentially, you're either buying the dip or you're selling the rally. And my rule of thumb is that if you close below the 21, there, buying the dip becomes a much more risky proposition, okay? Why? Because what can happen? It's like, all right, well, we came back up and we closed right at the 21. So for me to, first of all, for me to reverse, you know, my stance and say, well, what would it take for you to want to buy, start buying the dip again? Well, I would need to see, two closes above the 21. If I see two closes above the 21, ideally uh, the next day is a higher close, that builds up confidence that the, you know, the, the motion is now back, okay? So, oh, boom. Now this is devastating, right? That's just kind of like, man, this thing just got trounced, energy, financials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then to top it off, you're starting to get that 821 crossover, okay? In this type of situation, no way am I gonna be buying the dip on the Russell, all right? So we'll come along, we'll come along, boom, man, now we're at the 89. Now, once you get through the 89, so, so what happens is if you get through the 21, what you're looking for is, you know, in a bullish market, you're just looking for temporary kind of chop that you wanna stay out of. Okay, stay out of, potentially focus on some shorts. But if you break the 89, that is a trend change. Okay, that's the first thing that has to happen for a trend change, meaning, meaning that the trend on the daily chart, remember this is all res irrespective of time frame, is now lower. So now we bounced off the 89. Okay, now we're kind of, you know, we're back up there. And it just, again, at this point, it's okay to sell the rally, right? Sell the rally, spike up, stop out the shorts, come right back down, not very positive. Man, closing below the 89, that's devastating. And then boom, we'll get today. So that's kind of the analogy of how a top works out and why I get so paranoid when the markets close below that 21. And so now if we go back and we look at the NASDAQ, um, the NASDAQ has done this a couple of times this year, but is it is always held up, all right? So we have, you know, back here in June, it's like, well, okay, we close below, great. I, sh I remember shorting this rally. And it's like, all right, well, we're making a little bit of money, we're making a little bit of money. Okay, close up. It didn't get two days in a row. Okay, our shorts are still active. And at this point, it's like, all right, shorts didn't work. And that was a theme this year where it's like, okay, anytime it closed below the 21, shorts just aren't really working. You're not really losing a lot, but not making any money. And then we go on a rally again, okay? Uh, and then, so of course, this brings us today. It's like, okay, wow, after something like this, the only trade I'm interested in is shorting the rally, okay? And again, if we go back to IWM, because this is the possibility of what can happen. Once you get below the 21, it's just the beginning of a bigger move to the downside. Okay, so anyway, that's a, uh, so for me right now, I'm a, I'm switched to from, in, you know, buying dips on strong stops, stocks, looking at squeezes to the upside, to flipping, selling rallies, uh, and anticipating that the NASDAQ is gonna go the way of the IWM, okay? Hope it helps. You guys have a good one, and I'll be covering a lot more in the premium videos.